everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft video. My name is Shells and today we are back in my Legend of Alex world and what we are going to be talking about today is terraining. Um, <laughs> so I think the first thing that we're going to be doing is going over what I already have as far as terrain in my world. Things that I like, things that I dislike, and uh, things that we're going to be changing. Obviously, I mentioned in my last video that I was having troubles with my Hyrule Castle being, um, well, largely um, larger than any of the rest of my terrain, considering this is supposed to be Death Mountain compared to Hyrule Castle. It's pretty pathetic. So when I first created this world, not only was I using World Painter, but I also was having the limitation of the original build height. Death Mountain actually went up to what build height used to be before they recently changed it. So if you look, you know, about 250, yeah, that seems about right. That was what build height was. So that's one of the reasons why the mountain is pretty well shrubby. Uh, as such, I also couldn't really delve deep into the ground very well. Um, so I, I was really, really limited for the actual height that I could go with these things, which is probably one of the main reasons that it looks the way it does. Now, one of my problems with my mountain is, one, it's too gradual. Death Mountain is, you know, your typical volcano stick straight up in the air sort of look, and I do not have that here. Um, I also have this, you know, nice snow-peaked mountain sort of look going, and... Death Mountain does not fit that description either. So I almost need to have more of the Mesa biome sort of look that goes up into the whole of Death Mountain. So that's something I'm going to be trying to achieve in the future. I did like having the slot canyons to the north here where I'm going to be having uh, the G Goron City basically. Uh, I am not certain if I should keep it directly north of the castle. I've been noticing that I've been having a hard time trying to get a path that leads from Castle Town all the way up here just because of the castle being in the way, quite honestly. Um, so I'm not sure if I want to keep that exactly the same or not. Overall, I do think I need to increase the size of Hyrule Field dramatically. Another notable feature to talk about is going to be Lake Hylia. Um, in this original layout that I have here, um, I actually quite like it, but my lake is almost too big. Um, as you can see, we're approaching the edge of you know, our view distance here. Uh, I, I could almost shrink Lake Hylia to make more room for uh, Hyrule Field here, but I do like having the island uh, in the middle here. I have plans for it, um, and I like having it surrounded by uh, by cliffs, but I want these cliffs to be a little bit more overhanging, because right at the moment they're pretty gradual, so I really need to redo these cliffs, make them look more cliff-like. Um, and in fact, something that I'm planning on doing uh, is I think I need to put cliffs pretty well surrounding all of Hyrule. Um, right at the moment, Hyrule tends to, well, have these points where it just kind of ends. And yeah, there's nothing around on the other side. It just literally drops off into nothing. Um, and I, I'm not sure I like that. So I might end up surrounding most things in cliffs, just like I have Lake Kylia. Um, just to be a little bit more accurate to the games anyway. The forest is an interesting one. I really wanted there to be more trees so that way it felt more like a gradual, you know, going from field to trees, but I actually had my trees encroach a little bit too much into Hyrule Field. You can see how short this is. This is why I'm trying to increase the size again, is that basically Hyrule Field extends from there to there before it reaches forest. Um, and I could push the forest back, but I'm running out of room. That's the edge of the world right there. I do like my jungle trees and how that feels. So I'm going to actually be making sure to include this sort of thing. I'll probably keep my jungle trees exactly the same. 
Um, but you'll notice there is a huge uh, height difference between the jungle trees and the regular trees. And that's where I'm going to have to recreate some of my custom trees to make them more on par with the jungle trees. Maybe not quite as tall, but make it so that way there isn't just like a 50 foot jump between jungle tree to regular tree. Otherwise, I think my main goal for this is just to make the terrain more interesting. You'll notice that while I have hills and whatnot, they're all fairly well bland and flat. There's no interesting rock formations, um, even in the mountains. There's just nothing interesting to look at here. So we're going to be completely revamping this entire terrain, and quite honestly, it's for the best. I want this terrain to be dynamic, interesting, and beautiful, and we're going to have to uh, struggle a little bit to get it to that point. All right, I have quickly entered the realm of I have no idea what I'm doing. I have been watching some tutorials talking about how to use things like uh, GoBrush and uh, the Voxel Sniper, but I'll admit I don't have a whole lot of practice in these areas and I don't honestly know what I'm doing. And most of the time when I'm using things like World Edit, I'm using very, very basic commands. Um, so to say that I'm a little bit scared is a bit of an understatement, but here what I've done is I've basically made just a basic, very basic terrain in uh, World Painter. The problem with World Painter, however, is that uh, I actually can't get the new world height uh, installed into it, so it doesn't go below zero and it doesn't go above a certain height. Um, and it honestly limits a lot of things. So basically I just made a very flat terrain at a decent enough height. I do worry that I wish it was a little bit lower even because then I could make my mountains more extreme and my depths uh, more extreme as well. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to work with what I have here. This is zero, 0 I'm marking it because I am planning on putting the Temple of Time right here. I can't upload it right here right now because I am running uh, Minecraft 1.18 in order to be able to use things like GoBrush. I think for the most part what I'm my general plan is to do is actually to start with Death Mountain. I do know that I want Death Mountain to be in the upper right hand corner of the map, so you know the northeastern corner. I'm going to go ahead and build up Death Mountain. I'm going to build up the... Um, I want there to be similar to my old map. I want there to be slot canyons that then lead into the desert that will be in the northwestern side. Um, and basically I'm going to slowly work my way down to Lake Hylia. Um, is kind of my goal. So at this point I have a huge map and I'm just going to start building a volcano. I should probably mention that the reason why I've picked an all stone moonscape here to begin with is because I figure that having everything just be made out of stone to begin with will actually be a lot easier to build terrain off of and I can add things like grass and such on top of whatever stone I have. I just figure that doing that will be a lot easier on me and that way I can just kind of click places and I'm not having to worry about what the grass looks like or anything just yet and I can yeah do that part later. As it is right now I actually happen to be standing at exactly 1000, negative 1000 which is to the northeast. Uh, my exact dimensions for this world is 1500 uh, all the way to negative 1500 in every direction. So it's significantly larger than what I had before. Um, and I figure that being about 500 blocks from the edge is as good as enough of a position to then start placing Death Mountain. So I'm going to basically make a giant cylinder with World Edit here and then use things like the Go Brush and uh, Voxel Sniper to then start give it more of a mountainy shape. I don't know, is this a good size for the inside of a volcano? Obviously it's going to be adjusted, but well, it's a decent size. I still need to make it go higher. Apparently, um, looking at my commands, I can't actually make this number go any higher than 100. 
um, because I don't have it set that way. <laughs> I could probably go and change it, but that means going into my server file and changing it. Uh, so I might just build up from here as much as I can until I reach height limit. But um, as far as radius goes, I think that's decent. So I'll go ahead and work from it from there. And now I can get more of an idea of just how extreme this mountain is going to be. <laughs> is it overkill? Eh, we'll see. But again, I figure the more extreme I have things, at least initially, the better it will be. It'll be a lot better than my last map, which was so bland it was boring. So um, yeah, let's let's go with it. I think at this point I'm just going to go ahead and use Voxel Sniper. Um, I was going to just use the uh, the flint for the go brush, but it looks like it only makes little mounds on the ground and doesn't make a blob up here. So I'm just going to make a blob brush that then can come down and I'll basically draw the shape of uh, the contours of my mountain and fill in from there. All right, so I admit some of my newbiness is beginning to show. I couldn't figure out how to make Voxel Sniper actually draw the line like I wanted, so I'm just using a whole bunch of sphere brushes. Um, I figure if I do enough of these around the outside of the volcano, I'll get somewhat of a shape that I can then fill in with some of the better tools. Um, afterwards to make this look better than just spheres coming down, but I'm just trying really hard to make some sort of contoury things. Um, <laughs> please don't string me up. I have never done this before. Never. Ever. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm v very much a noob at doing terrain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be the first one to admit that uh, I, I'm not very good at this. Uh, I'm still learning. I'm, For the most part, my methodology seems to be placing a lot of sphere blocks, well, sphere brushes out, and then using the bee ball um, or blend brush, I guess, um, from Voxel Sniper to sort of smooth out things. And if I want to, I can extrude certain parts by using the gunpowder instead to just kind of make little blobs appear. And then I smooth them away back down. Um, I think this is going to take me a lot of getting used to, and I fully s anticipate building something, hating it, raising it to the ground, and then building it again. This is actually kind of fun coming underneath here and just like making the um, gunpowder b-ball just extrude outwards and just slowly grow like it doesn't look the most natural but I mean neither does the giant spheres um, so this is kind of neat uh, and then of course you know you can smooth it all over again afterwards so this is kind of fun <laughs> I have no idea what the results will be afterwards but yeah kind of fun Grow, my pretties, grow, grow, form, shape, yes. <laughs>
have a mountain now. Hooray! <laughs> uh, that took a an awful lot of finagling, but I managed to get it done. And I think it looks pretty well like how I imagined Death Mountain. Death Mountain is pretty well just a big old cone. Um, and I can incorporate something that looks like a, the ring cloud that surrounds it later. Now I will say that I am using a mod to view this in right at the moment. I'm using the Distant Horizons mod um, just so that way I could back up and still get a, a decent enough look at the mountain. You can see that line there that's generating. Uh, everything beyond that is basically what Distant Horizons is remembering. Otherwise it's not actually fully loading in. Which does mean that anybody from the castle probably won't be able to see Death Mountain, which is kind of a shame, but uh, eh, I, I'll do what I can. There's only so much you can do in making a realistic looking terrain at the scale I want and still being able to see it without fog covering most of it most of the time. At this point, what I'd really like to be able to do is actually start moving into um, creating the slot canyons over here. Uh, now I'm picking slot canyons because that's kind of what Gerudo Valley looks like in Ocarina of Time. Um, and I'm kind of just making the assumption that those slot canyons are going to completely surround the desert over here. Um, and I think they look cool. Now the problem with slot canyons is I have to make sure that there's a river running through it at some point. So the main there's one main river that runs through all of Hyrule um, that stems from Zora's Domain, which is always in a questionable location. We don't know where it is exactly. Um, <laughs> so we'll somehow have to find, make a room for a Zora's Domain and then run a river basically all the way through the slot canyon and then from the slot canyon down into Hyrule Field a little bit to make the moat for the castle um, and then down to Lake Hylia. I think that's how we're going to do it. Um, <laughs> that of course begs the question of where am I planning on putting Zora's Domain? Well in my last map I just kind of stuffed it in Death Mountain which is not particularly accurate to the games. It, there's no reason to believe that uh, Zora's Domain is actually in uh, Death Mountain, but it's kind of up by it for mo the most part, so I'm not really sure where to stick it. But yeah, I kind of figure that I'll figure out where I'm putting Zora's Domain after I do a little bit more terraforming here. I can start putting in the river through the slot canyons and then try to figure out where I want it to go from there. But yeah, my next thing here is slot canyons leading to desert and that's going to completely encapsulate uh, the entire corner here. Hmm. So I went ahead and loaded in a whole bunch of chunks into the distant horizons so that way I could get a feel for where my back corner is compared to Death Mountain. And uh, considering I was planning on making the slot canyons basically cover all the way to that back corner, uh, I'm quickly realizing that uh, I maybe should have had <laughs> her, the Distant Horizons mod on when I was initially picking the location of Death Mountain because I'm kind of wishing it was a little bit closer this way. Um, so... Yeah, I think I might end up moving it a good um, couple hundred blocks just to get it over more approximately there-ish. Please don't crash my game, please, oh please! Yes, yes, confirm. Yep, mm-hmm. Oh dear. Uh. <laughs> Might take it a bit. Oh, oh, it's doing something. Something's happening. I think Distant Horizons is freaking out because it's a whole bunch of chunks that it thought it knew what was going on and now they're not there anymore. I am beginning to suspect that something really bad happened because I'm expecting, well, reaching collision here 
and it kind of looks like it just duplicated one side of the mountain, like three iterations of it going out, so it copied it, and then copied it, and then copied it. Um, yeah, I think it's safe to say something bad happened. <laughs> You know, it's kind of cool when you view it from this angle. It could certainly use some smoothing out, but that is kind of neat. I'm almost tempted to leave it, except that means that I have to completely redo Death Mountain, which is a no-go because I was actually quite happy with the way it turned out. So, um, yeah, we're gonna give this a nice big undo and, uh, and hope that it brings my, my mountain back. <laughs> Hooray! My mountain is back! Um, I suspect that what happened was that, uh, because I was on that side of the mountain, it only moved what it could load in at any given time. Uh, and looking at it, even if I am at the very center of the volcano here, I don't think I'm quite loading in the entire thing. I have to basically tune out everything that Distant Horizons is doing. I suspect that this uh, cylinder over here that I can kind of see is the actual real chunks that are loaded in. And you can see here that even at the center of my volcano, uh, I, I'm just uh, not quite loading it all in. Uh, which means that there's a very low chance that I'll be able to, you know, even copy and paste it where I want it to go, but I'm gonna try anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're gonna try this method instead of uh, attempting to uh, do anything else with it. All right, all right, let's try this again. I think I'm in about the right spot I want to put it. Maybe. Paste! Probably gonna whine at me and say your thing is too big. Click to confirm. Or I'll just try to load it and take forever. Oh, oh, something's happening, something's happening. Hey. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I almost wonder if I should have pasted without air. Um <laughs> just to uh make it because despite this being a hulking figure that needs to go uh i think it would have been easier to blend if i had left that there all right all right undo <laughs> the distant horizons mod doesn't know what to think anymore and it's glitching out like crazy <laughs> oh, that was inevitable all right paste minus air this time there we go. See, I think that'll be a lot easier to make into some natural looking terrain. It'll still be nice and rocky and stuff. Um, I think at this point all I have to do is kind of squish this down. Who knows, maybe I'll turn this into Zora's Domain. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that makes for a much better transition there. Alright, so I'm not entirely sure what the best way to make this mountain squish is, but I'm going to assume I'm going to want to put this into push mode um, and I'm going to increase the uh, the intensity and increase the size dramatically and we'll see how it goes because I'm honestly not sure what this is going to do for me. What does right clicking do once? Oh yeah, it kind of squished. Maybe I can decrease the size a little bit. Look, like it's making little seismic rifts around. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll mess with it. Squish, 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 squish. Squish, squish. Squish, 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 squish. Hmm, I apparently squished the center crater down into the void. Whoops, oh well, I'll fix that later. Ah, this seems to be working a bit better. So what I've got here is I've got flat mode um, enabled and then I've got push mode and uh, that seems to be reducing it a little bit better. 
As far as the shape of Zora's domain, I'm not entirely certain what I want to do. So I might just leave it as this nice little crater area for right now. Um, but I will plan on having the Zora's River come down, go around the backside of uh, Death Mountain, around the back of where Kakariko Village would be, um, make the moat for the castle, and then probably come back up and go through the Slot Canyons and Gerudo Valley there before finally dropping off into Lake Hylia. I think that's how we're going to handle this. So uh, at some point I'll start to really carve out the river. I might actually build up some of the mountainside some more here and then carve out the river so that way I can kind of get an idea of where this river is going to be flowing. One of the things I've been doing off camera here is uh, trying to make this area look a little bit less flat and more rocky overall. Um, and the main way I've been achieving that has actually been using GoBrush, the flint over here. Um, I actually have selected uh, this Mesa brush and then uh, I have the size up to where the 3D size is about 33, you know, pull mode. Um, and what I've been doing is basically going to spots that look a little bit more, well, flat and pulling up on it like this and it looks really, really super broken and terrible looking. But what it does for me is when I come over with a, a b-ball brush for the voxel sniper, uh, I have the size set to 15, then I can just kind of smooth over it and what it helps to do is just eliminate some of the procedurally generated looking stuff that I've got over there um, and makes this place look more intentional. And I think that works okay for doing these rocky slopes and stuff. One of my worries with making all of this terrain and stuff is uh, that I have to still make it very much explorable for the player. And that also means I have to eventually figure out what I'm filling it with. Because um, nothing's more boring than an open world with nothing in it. Um, and at least Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom had things like Koroks hidden basically everywhere around the map. Um, and I have my cookies, but that's really not the same as a little puzzle thing you get to do. So I I'm a little bit conscientious of, hmm, this is an awful lot of empty space. What do I fill it with? And the answer is right at the moment, I don't know. But uh, we'll figure that out uh, later, I think. For now, I'm just trying to get the terrain to look good, and then I'll figure out what to fill it with. I went ahead and gave Zora's Domain just a little bit more shape so that way it wasn't just similar to Death Mountain, you know, a big crater essentially. Um, now we've got more of the delicate curves going in there. I'll probably continue to mess with this shape as we go, um, but I figure that at least marks it as being pointedly different than Death Mountain and of something of note in this otherwise uh, pretty boring rocky terrain stuff. Alright, now that I have thoroughly rockified basically this entire uh, upper right hand corner of the map here, uh, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and start in on making slot canyons and other canyon-like things that go basically in a big half circle all the way around the top left corner. This is because this is where the desert is going to go and similar to what you see in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom map, I'm surrounding it in the cliff sides like the, uh, the Gerudo Highlands, uh, minus the ice and snow bit. Now I'm not entirely certain how I want to build these. I think I need to take a different approach than how I made uh, this. Um, I'm thinking of just basically making a big raised area, flatten it out on top, and then carve slot canyons going all the way through. Uh, I've noticed that this game tends to be more of an uh, additive uh, medium instead of a subtractive medium, and what I mean by that is that it's easier to add stuff than it is to take away. So I'm a little bit scared to try to do a subtractive method here, but we'll see how it goes. All right, let's see what this does. Whoa. Hmm. 
Whoa. <laughs> hmm. Well, that was maybe a mistake. That's there now. Ugh. Okay, let's try something else. Uh, I think I've switched back to the exact same settings I had before with the Mesa brush and uh, the size back to where the 3D size is 33.7. I find that any more than that and it just lags to all heck uh, and I have more troubles controlling it. Um, flat mode is off, but I did increase the intensity by a little bit here. So uh, it's the same thing I've been using to make rocks, but I'm just gonna try to focus an area and try to at least get the cliffside walls up and then maybe I can fill in between. Did I not have the mesa thing selected? Hang on. Oh, I turned it off because I was a fool. Oh well, yeah, this is the mesa one. All right, we'll flatten it out with the um, flat tool later, I think. And I can kind of try to make it blend a little bit more with the land here. Uh, it looks hideous right at the moment, but uh, hopefully I can get it tall enough and then flatten it out with flat brush and it won't look so bad. help but feel like there was probably an easier way to go about making all of this. Um, but on the same token, I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out. Though I'm sure the comments are going to be filled with, hey shells, why didn't you do X, Y, Z? And I'll be like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think for now I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I think I might make another elevation change to go a little bit higher over here. Um, and looking at this stretch over here, I'll probably add more canyon-like stuff on the way to Lake Hylia. Um, but for now, I've got my initial wall done and I'm really happy with it. <laughs> so just to show you what this looks like from zero zero, that little gold block is exactly zero zero. So we can see Death Mountain over there. Um, you cannot see Zora's domain from back here. Um, but then we've got all of these cliffs here. Um, I'm noticing that this is looking maybe a little bit too flat. It doesn't look like there's much elevation change. And I think I do want to basically raise up the canyon and continue it this way and, and maybe have it slowly go creep down as it comes towards Lake Hylia. Um, just to give the landscape a little bit more definition than just big empty flat space with some rocks in here and there. So uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and work on that next. Uh, I was going to put, you know, slot canyon stuff through there and I probably will at some point, but I think I'm going to save that for when I'm actually putting in the river so I have a better idea of where things would actually go logically speaking. I still don't know if I want the river to run around the back side of Death Mountain or if I want it to run around Kakariko Village instead. Um, hard to say, so we'll mess with that later. I think something else I can do here is actually go ahead and put more rocky formations on the top of this mesa area here. Um, I kind of got something here, but it's relatively small, so if I could get uh, more 
bits and bobs of elevation change, you know, stuff like that um, on top of here, I think that would be highly beneficial. Uh, and then, of course, the more I can continue to remove the generic terraining, the better. I'm going to leave it for the sand area for the desert, but uh, this stuff has got to go. <laughs> Yeah, I will say that the more I'm adding to, you know, varying levels and steps and stuff like that, the more I'm happy with the way these cliffs are looking. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I am wondering if I need to make a little secluded region on the inside for where I'm actually going to put the Gerudo Fortress. Um, but I might just build the Gerudo Fortress up against like these cliffs right here and call it good. Um, and leave them a little bit open to the uh, elements here, but eh, that's all right. So I went ahead and did a little bit of off-camera work here, uh, just putting in this stuff over here, you know, before it was just this one wall. Uh, what I'm kind of going for here is I want to make a proper Gerudo Valley, uh, similar to what you see in Ocarina of Time. And so I was kind of thinking of having, you know, the water running through here. Problem is that in Ocarina of Time, the water goes down a big waterfall and then goes down this big ravine thing here. But um, no matter which way I spell it, the water's going to be at this level to start with. I, I don't think I can really avoid that. I would have had to basically move this entire section down always in order to make a decent waterfall. Um, I think part of the problem is because I started on this big flat plain, everything is, well, pretty flat uh, in relation to each other. But anyway, regardless, I did add in this section. I kind of stopped over there because I do want Lake Hylia to be uh, there-ish. And I would like it to be surrounded by cliff sides because that's what you see in the game. Um, <laughs> One of the things I'm really worried about, though, is that um, in Ocarina of Time, they have these big cliffside sections, but they are most of the time just a, uh, you're not actually supposed to be able to explore this area. It's just a big wall to prevent you from going there. And I can't really do that here. I have to pretty well uh, guarantee that somehow, some way, my players are going to get up onto some of this stuff. So I'm not entirely sure the best way to handle all of that, uh, other than to just let them, which means I need to put stuff up here for the player to actually enjoy. And I'll probably put more rock formations and stuff, similar to adding stuff on the top there. Um, but as it is, I've pretty well covered the entire northern section of the map at this point. Um, and I think that's a good enough stopping spot to call the episode here. One of my other worries, as I'm back here at zero zero once again, is that uh, I still have to figure out exactly uh, if I have enough room to stick a castle in here. I was originally thinking of having zero zero be centered on the Temple of Time. The problem with that is that'll actually shift the town that direction, and I worry that my castle is going to start running into some of that stuff, and I don't really want it to. Um, so I think what I might do is save my schematic where zero zero will be at the center of the main fountain in uh, Castle Town. Uh, it's not ideal as far as making portals to the Nether goes but uh, I think that will be beneficial because then it looks like I have plenty of room to actually fit my castle in and be a bit more decent with that. Something else I should probably mention, and I did already make a post about this, but for those of you who missed the post, I am actually expecting a baby next month. Um, as such, while I do have more videos in the works, I can't guarantee that my upload rate will be the most timely, since I'm not sure how much recording I'll actually be able to do with a newborn. So, uh, bear with me a little bit, since I expect that my videos will be a little bit, well, sporadic for the next few months. Um, as always, your continued patience and support is always appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!